you had one Rotarian in the group and enough people are from the area who were invited by various Rotary groups to be part of the team. Paul happens to be their leader. Uh, everybody, for some reason or another, is a police officer, maybe. And so, Paul, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can introduce your team, and you got your presentation, and go through it. Excellent. And I think we're going to be the guinea pigs because uh, I guess it's the first one you make. The first one in front of real people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Okay. No worries. <laughs> about me. Um, my history with Rotary goes back uh, 20 years, in fact 20 years this year. I was a US exchange student uh, to uh, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, and that's really where, well I call the gift that, gift that keeps on giving, um, uh, that brought around the changes in my life. And um, certainly uh, my exposure to Rotary, so uh, I guess the Americas have a lot to, uh, to blame for me, I guess. <laughs> So with that, um, uh, I went back to um, West Australia. I became a police officer back in 1995, painted my brain and spine in. And from there, uh, really never looked back. Um, I never ever lost touch with Rotary. Um, and it was when the time was right, my Rotary Club out there grabbed me and said, okay, it's time to become a Rotarian. And I did. For a period of time there, I had to drop off. I got transferred to a place called Shark Bay. Not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. <laughs> and with Shark Bay, there was no rotary, so I had to drop out of that, um, which was a shame. However, what it did do was open a door for me to be able to go on group study exchange. So I was lucky enough in 07 to take off uh, to Yorkshire, England, and well, red tie's on for another week. Um, <laughs> and certainly from, from there, um, we were... Uh, I got my group study change, I came back and obviously became a resident. So, <clears throat> you've already had an introduction, but we'll certainly get them in now anyway. Aaron Biggs, Jared Murphy, Taryn Werrick, and Jeremy Jones, all officers of WA Police. I'm certainly very, very proud to have these guys uh, on my team. I know when the opportunity came up, I found out that you're going to lead, or you have the opportunity, even if you're going to be interviewed with 19 other people, to lead a team of police to America. It was clearly no brainer, I had to get on board that one. Um, so certainly, uh, very, very proud of the guys so far, and very, very privileged to be here. Um, my district governor, Bob Cooper, sends his regards, as well as my president, Richard Ross, uh, and I know that uh, the last thing Richard says is he's going to be in good hands, and we've only been in town for a day, and we're, in <laughs> we're very, very happy. <coughs> a little bit about my family before we get going through the group. I always love an opportunity to chat, so I thought I'd just sneak a few little slides in. My kids, um, yeah, she's losing the teeth by the dozen, uh, and sadly <laughs> my bride, Jody. Um, it was interesting when I did my 2007 GSE uh, exchange, little Maddie man was six weeks old, uh, and we have a, a case here of history repeating itself. I'm not going to go into that any further, <laughs> but certainly um, uh, one of the boys here has got a little bit of news. So, when I'm not catching crooks, the other things I like to catch. Uh, and certainly, yeah, I put that one in, I know you think it's a young looking bear, and it is. Uh, that's the same one I was pulling out of the Alaska River, or the Yip and Yetna River up in Alaska, on years exchange. So, uh, I was still having a ball back then. Me, myself, professionally, I am actually the officer in charge of Margaret River Police. It's a town of around about 12,000 people. Uh, I have nine officers working for me. Uh, what a time anyway, Jones is one of them. And uh, certainly it's a very, very busy spot. We're um, a very, very big, busy spot. We have about one and a half million tourists that come through uh, every year. So um, it certainly keeps us on our toes. Um, but look, I'm really not going to go, it's not about me, it's about the team. These are the guys that you need to speak to. Oh, sorry, here. And uh, so I'm going to hand you straight over there. Thank you very much. Um, first, let me start by saying it's a privilege to be here today and have this opportunity to speak to you. Um, 
As Bear said, my name is Aaron. Um, it's a little busy up there. Pretty much everyone in Australia has a nickname, hence why it's Bear, Grungy, Chucky, Spud, and Chucky. Uh, it's just something that happens. <laughs> And that was just one bad sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so, a um, little bit about me. I grew up, I was born in New Zealand. Uh, for those who don't know, it's kind of like uh, Australia's little cousin, a little island down the bottom. We don't like them, but a little bit like Canadians and Americans, I guess. Um, my parents, my dad's an Aussie, uh, so we came back to Australia when I was 18 months old. Uh, I've lived in Australia for my whole life. Uh, grew up in Queensland, on the Sunshine Coast, which is now the north of Brisbane. Beautiful little spot, and it's called the Sunshine Coast, and that's the reason for it. Uh, year of year <coughs> weather is perfect, so a lot of my time was spent in the water. Um, fishing, uh, swimming, spear fishing, surfing, boating, anything to do with water, that's pretty much what we do. In fact, it was uh, down by the beach um, in the summer holidays where I met my uh, wife, Lisa, my future wife at the time. I'm married, been that way now for 10 years, with my wife uh, Amber, and we had our first born baby, a little Ariana name. She was born um, six weeks ago now, so following Bear's footsteps. Um, so I do have the luckiest, uh, sorry, I'm, I am the luckiest guy on the trip, for the fact that my wife still let me come. <laughs> um, <laughs> but don't worry, I'll be buying plenty of uh, duty free for it as we go through. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only way I'm going to get out of it. Um, the other best thing about my little baby was that uh, she was born three days before her 10th wedding anniversary, so very special. Um, yeah, great time. Very much enjoyed it. <coughs> um, local copper in a small country town, town of Uh My town has around 4,500 people, but out of those we have over 40 nationalities represented within the community. We're about four hours out bush, so it's a very unique kind of town in the fact that we have large amount of popular mixture of cultural diversity in a very restricted area. Um, you never know what you're going to be dealing with in the town, and that's probably the best thing I like about the job. Also gives you an opportunity to talk to people. That's a great part of it. I've been given the opportunity today to not only talk about myself, but also just to share a little bit of information about Australia, and about something that is close to my heart, and that's the four and fauna. Hopefully after my talk, you guys might even want to come. So I must say well nothing. To <laughs> 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 um, we'd love to have you. Um, there's not a lot in the middle. We are an island for those who don't know what Australia looks like. Um, on the bottom, we walk upside down, as I heard someone here say today. I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, Australia, when you come to Australia, the main thing that you'll probably be looking for is the things that can kill you. I mean, that's what Steve Irwin was so famous for, jumping around, rolling around with the crocodiles and the snakes and whatnot. So, I do have some facts here. Uh, when it comes to our snakes, there's around uh, 400 different varieties of snakes in the world. Australia has 140. And out of those 140, uh, or sorry, out of the 400 snakes varieties in the world, uh, the top 25 most poisonous, 20 of them live in Australia. Ooh. Ooh. So, including all the top ten. It's something that we're pretty proud of. <laughs> <laughs> but snakes aren't the most prevalent uh, of our poison species. When it comes to spiders, we have over 2,000 spiders in Australia. Uh, our most famous spider would be the red black spider, which is a relative of the black widow spider. So I'm standing down there too. Uh, hopefully not under every chair like the red black. But that's right, we used to deal with those. But if you did think of animals in Australia, uh, most people would think of either the crocodiles or the snakes or the spiders or the stingrays or the dingoes. Um, but we do have some other gorgeous ones too. Now, the most iconic would be the kangaroo. Um, instead of being lazy on the beach, it's about every day, they don't work. But the one one animal that truly symbolises what it is to be in Australia would definitely have to be the platypus. Now, this thing has the feet of an otter, the bill of a duck, uh, duck of a milk, it has the tail of an otter, it lays eggs, um, and it's a mammal. There's only three mammals in the world that do lay eggs, um, and this is one of them, and it's pretty much 
um, a very unique animal, not just for Australia, but for anywhere. Um, I think it really sum sum summarises what it is to be in Australia, the fact that it's a bit of parts from everywhere, all jammed into one animal and thrown out in the world <laughs> stage, and everyone's scratching their head wondering what we are. Right. The reason why we do have such an interest in mixed animals is primarily due to the landscape of Australia. Now we do have snow, contrary to popular belief, we do have enough water there for snow to fall in certain places, but the most of it is the uh, red of the outback, the most symbolic, the air rock there, the fuller roof. In Australia we have everything from the north and the tropics, uh, with the humidity, humidity uh, the Kakadu, with all the great water pastures up there, down to the eucalyptus in the mountains behind uh, Victoria. It's a great place to come and see, there's lots to do, I promise the spiders and the snakes won't get you. Um, the crocodiles are always up for a roll. So if you do want to come down, please, we'd love to see you. Now I'd like to pass over to um, my good friend Spud. Okay. Now luckily for me, I've got the, uh, the hardest task is that I have to follow up the bunny of course from all the team, so yeah. probably won't get, get as many laughs. Um, as I said, Jared Murphy, everyone calls me Spud. The only person who calls me Jared is my wife and my mother. Jerry, you have to be a name for me, like the rest of my family, that sort of thing. Another nickname. I'm 44 years old, so I'm the oldest person on tour. So far, I've probably been the most responsible, but that's probably changed in the next few days. You know, we've settled into <laughs> Virginia. I'm looking forward to seeing for some of the, uh, the next couple of years. Uh, personally, I've been a police officer for um, 24 years, so I'm <coughs> just over halfway through my career before I get back into my one of the discipline race, and then go to heaven and then 65. Um, most of that time has been spent in uh, Reaper WA or in the South West. I've only worked in the Perth metropolitan area for probably about three years out of those 24. Um, I don't really want to go back to Perth at this stage. Uh, if I'm promoted above my rank as sergeant in the same chair, um, it earns more than likely I'll have to go back to Perth. So, um, personally, I come um, from a family of uh, five kids. I grew up in the town of Geraldton. My little family has got them. So I've got uh, a wife, my wife named Karen. She's been a therapist, we've been married for 18 and a half years, and then two kids. So the one there in the bottom right, as you see it, is probably the most recent. That's the start of this school year, and then we start our school year in February. So I have uh, Lily, who is eight, and Lily is four, and that's been five years So if you didn't see any photos of me at work like you did with Aaron, um, I've been a, a traffic copper for most of my life. Um, I was just recently in charge of uh, 14 staff at a traffic office for about four years. In the last six months, I've taken over a new role as a staff officer for a superintendent. So basically, <coughs> I'm a, a, per a personal assistant to the boss of our police district. So, this is my family again. We've been on a few holidays. This one over here is back to Pitsy Country in Queensland. Um, this is my kids helping me wash the car. This is my son besides the much better assistant. Um, and a couple of, most of my most of my time is spent with my kids um, doing things I've worked at uh, the tree house over there. Um, when I'm not at work, I spend time with my kids. I spend time um, at school. I'm the president of the uh, Bumby Primary PMC, which is the PTA, uh, where my kids go to school. Um, I'm also on the school board as well. And um, I was deputy chair of that school board the last couple of years and I'm also running the club committee from that school board as well for some parking traffic issues that we have. So my time is spent at home, at school and at work, and uh, more times than not, I feel like I'm actually spending the time at school than anywhere else. So that's about my family. Um, Western Australian Police. Um, as you see from the growth, it's actually the single biggest policing jurisdiction uh, in the world. It has been that way for over 160 years. WA Police was uh, formed back in 1829. So the Swan River Colony was founded in 1829. Government stealing for a few part time coppers together and said, Go out and do what you need to do. It wasn't until about 1853, um, so not that many years ago, compared to the history in this country, that WA Police was first formed. We were given our police uh, regulations back then, and some of those police regulations were actually still here for now. Um, there are 5,700 sworn officers. All of us five are sworn police officers, so we swear to uphold the Queen's peace and protect life and property. So that's what we're about. Um, the structure is that there is uh, 14 police districts um, in the whole of the state, and there's 150 police, police stations. So we have a population of about 2.2 million people in Western Australia, and 5,000 people in the top of the 
You see that here in the in the red. So there's two of us with the three stripes. There's only one with the one stripe. And then these two other people here are they're, they're the ones that we throw out to the wolves when the going gets tough. <laughs> we throw them out first and then they come out once the smoke's cleared. Which is the way it should be. Yeah. 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 And you also see our print emblem. Um, and we all have our little um, typhoons on with them on there. So this is our symbol. Obviously the crown is because we are part of the Commonwealth nation. So we still have the queen as, as the top. We have the lower leaf, the leaf which is the uh, uh, from Greek mythology, I think, which is uh, achievement for valor and victory. We also have uh, the five-pointed star, which basically says that a police officer is ready to go anywhere uh, at any time to, to uh, do their job. And then, of course, our state emblem, which is the kangaroo four, the black swan and the two kangaroos. So that's what our badge is, that's on our hat badge, and that's also on our badge that we wear on our uniform as well. So we are a fairly big organisation. Um, there's a, there's a significant budget. We have a lot of special activities here, which you can see um, a wonderful traffic car sitting going up on the gravel. Um, but we have an air wing with a brand new helicopter, and that's why that's beyond there. Um, and a water police section, um, mounted section. We have a train line section. Um, at forensics, we have a very big forensic section, and they are uh, all sworn police officers, unlike a lot of jurisdictions in the So that's me. I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Karen. <laughs> Chucky. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to say Pies up there, but Chucky is apparently. Welcome to Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> the Chucky story. I live about half an hour from there in Jeremy. I went to, they had a, like a, an agricultural show. I had some food from an earth and cart there. It was a German sausage and it made me ill. And I threw it up everywhere. I just think it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why. 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 I'm not sure
probably the surname would throw an EY or a Y at the end of it. Not Jonesy, as is Bigsy. Um, so, yeah, I'm commonly, I don't think anyone in my station actually knows my first name. So, uh, just refer to me as Jeremy. I've been in, in the uh, WF Police now since 2008. Um, I'm about to get a strike. Hey. Um, but I won't, I won't, uh, possibly can not bother anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I am stationed in Mug River, I'll go over a little bit about that in a second. Um, quickly on my family, um, top left is my grandparents, I grew up um, mainly with my grandparents because my parents own their own company um, and they, they work a fair bit, so I grew up with my grandparents. Lost my grandfather last year due to a really aggressive brain tumour, he was my idol and someone I really looked up to, so uh, he's up there. Got a younger brother, um, I think he's 20, um, six years different, so there's obviously a bit of probably love there. Um, <laughs> down the bottom, uh, far left is my best mate, my green shirt, <coughs> my, cousin, uh, my brother and my dad is at the back, um, and my mum and grandmother on the bottom right. Um, my home life, I uh, obviously live in Margaret where I work. Um, my beautiful fiance Michelle on the top right. I have uh, two dogs, Storm and Zach. They're both little terrors. And uh, we call the cat the devil cat because she just likes to claw and bite us and everything like that. She might look at you and cuddle, but she's not really really. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of hobbies. I, um, they call me a part time police officer because I'm never at work. I'm always out doing my hobbies. Um, I actually umpire international tennis. I've done five, uh, five Australian Open Grand Slams. I'm hopefully going to bump on my first US Open this year, uh, so hopefully I'll be happy later on. Um, I've been doing that for about 10 years now, and I'm going to work my way up to the food chain there. Um, if you go any further, I'm probably going to have a look at doing it full time, because I'm just going to do it at the moment. Enjoy my job until the police come around. Um, got a motorbike, enjoy riding around, I love golf, we were just talking about that earlier. Um, look forward to experiencing a few of the courses over here. Um, I do a bit of uh, volunteer work for Bright Blue Charity, it's actually the commission, the police commissioner for the charity. Um, it all started up because uh, a good friend of theirs, um, child got diagnosed with a brain tumour, um, and the commissioner decided he needed to do something about this and start having his staff, as well as other kids um, that have cancer. So the charity, what it does is raises money and purchases necessary equipment for our um, children in hospital to try and, one, early detection and two, prevention. Of Charity Golf Day within Margaret River on the police and banner uh, for Bright Blue and Road. Just so we've got a bike around there for years. Um, I'm also a White Ribbon ambassador. Uh, White Ribbon is a, uh, an Australian foundation which uh, is there to try and stop domestic violence in the community. So I'm an ambassador for that. A um, bit about Margaret River. Um, as Ben touched on it, there is uh, nine staff there, there being the OIC. Um, Um, the last census was conducted of 9,000 people that uh, currently live there. We get between 1 to 1.5 million tourists a year. So the population isn't really the ones we're, we're policing, it's more of the tourists coming down. Um, it's located uh, 277 kilometres, which is uh, 172 miles uh, south of Perth. And it's about a three hour drive, so it's a very beautiful place. Um, the surrounding area is the Margaret River Wine Region. I think we worked out we got 70% of the, the uh, wine throughout Australia. Not confirmed, but um, I think that's, that's where we got with that. I'm trying to work that one out. It produces 3% of the wine in Australia, but of the wine that it does produce, it's in the top 25%. So oh, very, very oh, small oh. production, very, very high quality. Um, nearly, this just puts it in perspective, nearly 5,500 hectares, or 21 square uh, miles, is under vine. Um, we've also got uh, the Burana Forest, which is your bottom right. Um, that's home to uh, the third tallest tree in the world, being the Carry Tree. Stands at 60 plus metres tall or 196 feet tall. Um, so that's another popular tourist, tourist destination. It's got beautiful beaches, um, as you can see there. Um, we also hold an international surf event, uh, which has just, just passed to become quite an attraction. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the unique facts of Australia. The size of Australia, as you can see, is the whole of Europe, isn't it? 
um, but it's probably one of the smallest populations uh, when it comes to land to person. Um, it is just shy of 3 million square miles thick, and it is, it is an island. Uh, it's home to the Great Barrier Reef, one of the pictures. Uh, it is the largest coral reef in the world, and it stretches uh, 1,250 miles um, from a series of individual reefs all put together. Uh, it's extremely beautiful, um, but it does, uh, it does attract a lot of tourists. I was tracking the, the delicate ecosystem there, so mm -hmm. they try and restrict the amount of tourists you get just so we can remain too for the views and untouched, so to speak. A few other things that are pretty exclusive to Australia. We've got um, a drinking age of 18. I think it's 21 here. That's correct. Um, and <coughs> it's actually illegal not to vote if you are 18 years of age. Did you, did you vote? No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have to enrol to vote, I'm not enrolled. She found it, <laughs> now, the capital city of Australia, which is top right, is Canberra. It's not the biggest city in Australia, our two biggest cities are Melbourne and Sydney. Um, the reason why Canberra is the capital city is because Melbourne and Sydney couldn't get over the differences and try and work out who was going to have the capital, so they decided roughly we'll build one in the middle. And uh, that's why Canberra is now our capital. Um, the top left picture is the Melbourne Cup, it's called the Race Across the Nation. Basically, every workplace in Australia stops to watch that. Um, it's probably our quietest policing time of the year when that race is on, because no one's going to be It attracts horses from all over the world, um, and it's, it's a very prestigious race. Um, I think the East of States has public holidays just for that race. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have them yet in Western Australia, but we have a tradition to try and get it. Um, Australia's home to some of the uh, The most, uh, some of the really good man-made structures. The bottom is a picture of the Sydney Harbour, <coughs> the Sydney Opera House, and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Um, the bridge is a steel through bridge uh, across the Sydney Harbour and connects the North Shore to the Sydney CBD, um, and it holds vehicular, bicycle, pedestrian, and uh, train, yet rail um, traffic. Uh, the bridge is designed, that was designed on the influence of the health sectors in New York. So, and it was the third, uh, the world's longest, sorry, the world's widest long span bridge, uh, only 160 feet wide. Uh, the bridge and the harbour are a rather iconic image that you probably see wherever you go when people are talking about Australia. Right, that, uh, that completes the presentation. Um, this group is very, uh, I said we're, we're Australian, we're open to communication to answer any questions you have. Um, our email addresses are either on here or there's a brochure on your table next to your seat. Um, if you have any questions or you want to touch base with us and talk with us when we're down the track, feel free to drop us a line on the email. Um, we've all got US mobiles if you want to talk to us while we're here. Um, now, jump on the Facebook page. If you want to, anyone's got Facebook here and they want to follow our, our journey, we're uploading pictures daily and uh, telling people where we are just so people back home and also people over here can. I know we've got a few host families already doing high five for you there. Um, and that will open the floor to any questions. I know a couple of you mentioned the uh, tourists that you did. Where are the majority of the tourists from? All over the world. Margaret, all all over. Majority. Yep. Absolutely everywhere. We have a lot in Margaret River, being a wine country, we have a lot of um, backpackers. Um, France is a big one for us. Um, we're from Europe. Based on the proximity to work on the Sydney um, when it's great picking time. So they'll, they'll hang around for a couple of months and then it's been amazing. Any other questions? You have a member of the United States Marines visiting mm -hmm. there now. How is that affecting you? Well, uh, they're, they're the top end of the country, so um, yeah, they haven't, uh, they're up in the Northern Territory there, right up in the middle. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't really speak for the Northern Territory, but uh, there is such a good symbiotic relationship with Australia and the US. Uh, anytime you guys have jumped into any sort of conflict, we're right in there as well. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it was uh, it was a little bit of news 
since marine planning, and now it's life goes on. We have, so, we have more issues with um, the US Navy coming in, especially with their um, aircraft carriers and nuclear powers. It's more of, yeah, it's, it's not so much the people coming in, the, the protesters that try and stop the ships from, ships from berthing. So to have a, a marine base in the Northern Territory doesn't affect us any more than it would a US carrier group coming in for a couple of days. Uh, yes, I just want to say that uh, thank you for your service to being police officers. Uh, I know that's a duty that uh, requires a lot of uh, personal sacrifice. I'm interested to know what kinds of crime and what kinds of uh, issues that you have to deal with in your area. Mostly, I don't know. Well, look, uh, area by area, then, because there's different issues, uh, property, <coughs> but I don't think so. I'm based in a, what's called a rural town, uh, Bush, Bush Town. It's, it's a little bit of a uh, hard to do town. We've got a large population in the gut involved in the farming. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, sheep and wheat, grain is produced and, and retaining. The crime that originates there, however, are from the people that aren't working. Um, and we do have a large percentage of, of our population that are unemployed, just through their own personal desires, I guess. And the crime that they are involved in normally uh, works around alcohol. And also we are starting to see a lot of um, meth methamphetamine. Ice um, is starting to rear its head. Not as bad as in America, but it's definitely starting to take a toll. Now, because of those two key factors, alcohol and uh, meth, uh, most of our violence is either related to the stealing associated with you know, the purchases or with the associated violence that comes from a life of using it. So uh, domestic violence is massive in Japan. Um, I work with, on, the, on the charge of domestic violence before probably out at my station. We have more domestic violence with 4,500 people in Katanning than the, uh, the nearest biggest town has 45,000 people. We share the same figures. So the amount of domestic violence we have is astronomical. Um, and a lot of that is a, a culture that, that assumes that it's all right. But that's because of the, the alcohol and the associated drugs. I think, Dexter, when you go towards um, the, what it is that causes that, the drugs and alcohol, property crime is obviously caused by We have some massive powers to move people on and arrest people for being drunk. Um, but yeah, that's our main issue. It's a great question because I'm going to throw it over to Jonesy to see if he knows why it comes to work. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a farmer and you need to destroy animals for a reason, you don't have to go and pick 
WA has the most restrictive uh, gun laws out of Australia. I personally I did a bit of shooting in Queensland, joined the force, tried to transfer my guns over, looked at how much paperwork there was and went, yeah, no, I'm gonna, gonna leave it behind. But we have a unique um, uh, situation where the guns are actually licensed to the person. So if two people have, uh, say, 22s, the exact same model, they can't use the other person's gun because they're only licensed to the one gun. Um, so it is, it is very restrictive, but it also means that you have great control over it. Um, we have very few murders uh, in the and how many gun-related murders have we had? No, there's an exception to the rule. You, you certainly don't see it. It's, it's a very eyebrow-raising event when someone gets shot uh, in a crime. You can't get access to handguns unless you're in a club if you're in support of the person with that club. Handguns are just, oh, not seen. Australia, automatic and semi-automatic. Well, being a police officer is a great comfort knowing the yeah. majority, most of the population. Yeah. Yeah.